Good morning, guys. Able to hear me? The voice is all clear. Oh. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> so everyone felt uh, I, I'm pretty sure everyone, everybody felt pretty fine with the evening classes the 9 p.m. class I think the yeah, time at China subay at baje rat ke na 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 baje we don't have any disturbances the internet is all fine etc right okay. yes <coughs> Okay, so let us continue the discussion and uh, we will begin the MCQ sessions uh, today. Okay, now um, let us see the first question for the day. Consider the following statements. President of uh, Servants of the People Society participated in the non-cooperation movement in the, and this also Tegraha, promoted the White Revolution, signed the Tashkent Declaration with Pakistan. The above statements are actually related to which of the leaders? Jawaharlal Nehru, Charan Singh, Indira Gandhi, Lal Bahadur Shastri. <coughs> Tashkent Declaration, no? Tashkent declaration is your uh, can say trigger point. Lal Bahadur Shastri, LB Shastri. Shastri became a member of the Servants of the People Society, uh, Lok Seva Mandal, founded by Lala Lajpat Rai. He also, there, it was in Servants of the People Society that he started to work for the upliftment of the backward classes and uh, later became the president of uh, Servants of India Society. And uh, he participated in the non-cooperation movement and the Salt Satyagraha. Shastri also promoted the White Revolution, a national campaign to increase milk production in India. He also promoted Green Revolution, the idea of Green Revolution. You, uh, the, the slogan, uh, Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan was actually given by Shastri Ji only. Oh, is it Shubranil? Pata nahi hai. Ah, that is because... Uh, Oh, thoda chroma ka problem hai. That is why my hair is shining. Today I became Avenger. So, <laughs> so that's why. Oh, the the chamki chamki jo aara, that's because of chroma. Okay, so in 1964 he actually signed uh, with Sri Lankan uh, Prime Minister Shirema Banda Naike. About an agreement concerning the Tamils, <clears throat> this uh, is famously known as the Sirimavo Shastri Pact. In 1964, it was signed, Sirimavo Shastri Pact, and uh, he signed the Tashkent Declaration on the 10th of January 1966 with uh, President of Pakistan Muhammad Ayub Khan, mainly to end the 1965 war. Who among the following was the last Mauryan king? Ashoka. Dashrata, Brihadrata, Kunala. Okay, okay. Okay, that's a good thing. The answer is D, S E C C, Brihadrad. Brihadrad Maurya in 185 BC, he was overthrown by his own commander in chief, Pushyamitra Sunga.
Brihadratha Maurya, who was the commander in chief, he was killed by his own, uh, I mean, he was the last king, he was killed by his own uh, king, Pushyamitra Sunga, and Sunga, Pushyamitra Sunga was a Brahmana. The Mauryan king Brihadratha, who was assassinated Pushyamitra Sunga, after Ashoka's death, Maurya Empire began to divide into parts, mainly Eastern and Western Maurya. The Western past were ruled by Kunala, <coughs> one of the sons of Ashoka, and the Eastern part by Dasharada, one of the grandsons of Ashoka. So, Eastern part, which is partly Putra, etc., was run by Dasharada, Ashoka's grandson, and uh, the Western part was run by Kunala, Ashoka's son. Due to Bactrian invasions, the Western part of the empire collapsed, and the Eastern part was intact under the Samprati successor of Dasharada, but eventually Dasharada and Samprati successor Brihadratha was eventually killed by his own minister Pushya Mitra Sunga. With reference to the medieval kingdoms of Northeast India, what are the what was the position of pikes? They held large amount of land and gold and donated it for the public welfare. They were mercenaries recruited from uh, other kingdoms. They were the patrons of literature and art. They were forced to work for the state. <laughs> the pikes, pikes. You hear about this in the Pika Rebellion as well. Pikes were actually, when Ahoms migrated to Brahmaputra Valley from the present day Myanmar in the 13th century. In approximately 13th century, Ahoms migrated to the present day Brahmaputra Valley. They created a new state, suppressing the older political system of the Bhuyans. The older landlordism, landlord of the feudalism called the Bhuyans was suppressed and a new political system was created by these guys. The Ahom state depended upon forced labor. Those forced to work for the state were known as pikes exactly as bengal odisha assam section the census of the population was taken each village had to send a number of pikes by rotation people from heavily populated areas were shifted to less populated areas, mainly to the cross migrate and to maintain the balance of the population and balance of the supply chains people, every village had to <coughs> provide mandatory free labor to the government consider the following statements regarding treaty of salbai treaty of salbai was signed between marathas and the british east india company as per the treaty british recognized the territorial claims of maj east india in the west of yamuna river raghunath rao was freed and a pension was fixed for him which of the above statements is or are correct one only three only Two, one, two, and three. Two and three. Treaty of Treaty of Salbai was actually signed between the Marathas and the British East India Company. As per the treaty, <coughs> British recognized Madhavrao Narayan or Savai Madhavrao as the Peshwa of the Maratha Empire. British also recognized the territorial claims of Mahaji Shinde in the west of Yamuna River. Joki Ajka Haryana Dili region Atahan. And then Raghunath Rao was also freed and a pension was fixed for them. If you remember, Raghunath Rao was sent to uh, Satara and uh, in Satara he was settled down. Remember? That one. British East India Company, thanks to Treaty of Salbai. 
gained the control of the region of Salset. British promised to support Marathas in case of an attack with Hyder Ali of Mysore and retake the territories of Karnatic. In summary, the Treaty of Salbai was an outcome of the First Anglo Maratha War. The attempt was to maintain status quo, but the reality is, Treaty of Salbai made Britishers the absolute rulers of India. Consider the following statements regarding radicals and British rule in India. They went beyond the narrow criticism and imperialistic outlook of the conservatives and imperialists. They advocated the introduction of modern Western science, philosophy and literature. Raja Ramohan Roy and other like-minded reformers opposed radical school of thought. Which of the following statements is or are correct? <laughs> Radical school of thought. You know the Orientalist uh, Anglicist controversy. Where you read about this? The answer is actually B. B. Yes, Parth, you're right. Radicals were they were they went beyond the narrow criticism and imperialistic outlook of the conservatives, and imperialist and applied advanced humanistic and rationalist thought to Indian situation. They thought that India had the capacity to improve and that they must help the country to do that. They wanted to make India part of the modern progressive world of science and humanism and therefore advocated an introduction of modern Western science, modern philosophy and modern literature. Some of the British officials who actually came to India after 1820 were actually radicals. <laughs> They were strongly supported by people like Raja Ram Mohan Roy. See, two classic examples of radicals who came to India are uh, um, Lord William Benting, Lord Dalhousie. They were radicals. They were radicals. Which of the following were the literary works of uh, B. R. Ambedkar, Bahishkrit Bharat, Buddha and His Dhamma, India of My Dreams, Annihilation of Caste? Select the correct answers from the quotes given below. Bhaiskal Bharat, Buddha and his Dhamma, India of my dreams, annihilation of caste. Good one, Anusha. Barnika, you're right. And India of my dreams is actually a book by Gandhi, no? India of my dreams is a book by Gandhi. It's a book by M.K. Gandhi, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. <coughs> now, next question. Consider the following statements. Permanent settlement was introduced by British to encourage investment in agriculture. The British expected the permanent settlement system would help emergence of a class of uh, yeoman farmers who would be loyal to the company. Which of the following statements is or are correct? One only, two only, one and two, neither one nor two. Answer this, guys. I'm just coming. Answer this one second. Answer must be C. Yes, 
it is C. See, the intention of permanent settlement was actually, I mean, the intention was to develop, encourage investment in agriculture. You have to understand this very well. The intention was genuine. It was not just to exploit. It became an exploitation tool at a later stage. The permanent settlement was actually introduced mainly to resolve the problems which had been facing in Bengal, which the farmers have been facing in Bengal. By the 1770s, the entire rural economy in Bengal was actually in crisis with recurring famines, a declining agricultural output and, you know, sort of chaotic situation. Officials of Bengal felt that agriculture, trade and revenue resources of the state could all be developed with encouragement of investment in agriculture. Yes, this could be done by securing the rights of property and permanently fixing the rates of revenue of demand. The intention was in the permanent settlement, the zamindar would actually invest money on land and develop agriculture. But unfortunately, zamindar, Britisher Sebi, Bhankar Nikla, he actually started exploiting the land only for money, just like the Britishers. That is why the permanent settlement failed. If the revenue demand of the state was permanently fixed, the company could look forward to a regular flow of revenue, while entrepreneurs, while the zamindars could actually feel sure of earning a profit from their investment since the state would not siphon off by increasing its claim. The process officials hoped would lead to emergence of a class of yes-men farmers or yeomen farmers who would be absolutely loyal to the British. <coughs> Nurtured by the British, this class would be loyal to the company. I mean, that's the, the intention was they'll be loyal to the company. Consider the following statements regarding the Young Bengal movement. The movement was launched by Surendranath Banerjee and later gained prominence with the participation of Henry Vivian de Rosio. The movement had influence of French Revolution. The movement failed to have long-term impact. Which of the following statements is or are correct? <laughs> This one you should be able to ask quite easily, yes. Yeah, uh, two and three, huh? Answer is two and three because Young Bengal movement was itself launched by Henry Vivian de Rosio, an Anglo Indian teacher from Calcutta, who was appointed to the Hindu college as a teacher. He drew inspiration from the French Revolution. De Rosio inspired uh, his students, his pupils, for uh, the thoughts of French Revolution, like free and rational thinking questioning the authority, reasoning, liberty, equality, fraternity in absolute terms. And Dorazi also supported women's rights and education. And if you want to also supported women's rights and education. The Dorazians, however, failed to have a long-term impact because obviously he was removed from the college by 1831 and eventually he died very early due to cholera. There was absolutely no support from other social group or class. The problem was, see, why always remember why Derosians actually failed is they were just too radical and too quick at the same time. See, what they were trying to achieve was good, but what they were attempting to achieve was way too ahead of its time. And that was a problem. Consider the following statements regarding radicals during the British rule in India. They went beyond the narrow criticism. Oh, this is this got repeated once. Consider the following statements regarding partition of Bengal 1905. Partition of Bengal was carried out by British Viceroy in India, Lord Curzon. New provinces of East Bengal and Assam were created after the partition of Bengal. The incident gave birth to Swadeshi and Ritala movement. Which of the following statements is or are correct?
Okay, the answer will be A. Completely out of the blue for everybody. Ah. The party in Bengal into two provinces was affected in July 1905. Yes, I know. Most are not. <laughs> most don't even know. I mean, I'm pretty sure most of you even heard about the Ritala movement today. The new provinces of East Bengal and Assam were actually included in the whole of Assam and Dhaka. Rajshahi and Chittagong divisions of Bengal with the quarters at Dhaka. Now, Ritala is a place in Delhi. The movement or riots of Ritala, the Ritala movement, happened between 1911 to 1932. It had nothing to do with Swadeshi movement. These were Ritala riots of Delhi. Karzan justified his action on administrative grounds, but it was very clear that Karzan was purposefully partitioning Bengal in order to create a divide across Bengalis. Saf Saf Thai. This was also intensified the national movement in India. Gandhiji represented Indian National Congress in which of these roundtable conferences? First roundtable conference 1930-31, second roundtable conference 31, third roundtable conference 1932 and none of the above. Kunal did not come, no? Kunal, are you there? Gandhi attended the second roundtable conference in 1932. Gandhi attended the second roundtable conference in 1931-31. Remember Gandhi went and half naked fakir and all that was also used by Churchill. Churchill even called him the half naked fakir. And the three roundtable conferences of the 1932-30-32 were a series of conferences organized by the British government and uh, uh, Indian National Congress. These actually started in November 1930 and ended in December 1932. They were conducted as per the recommendations of Jinnah to Viceroy Irwin and Prime Minister Ramsay MacDonald and uh, they even submitted their report based on Nehru report and Simon Commission report of 1930. The demands of Swaraj or self-rule in India had been growing increasingly strong during this period. Congress boycotted the first roundtable conference but eventually Gandhi Irwin Pact was signed. And uh, on the insistence of the McDonald government or Ramsey McDonald government, Gandhi had to attend the second roundtable conference in September 1931. With respect to Indian history, the terms Ramapithikas and Shivapithikas were used to represent the remains of human fossils of uh, regions mentioned in Ramayana Mahabharata uh, unearthed by using carbon dating method, temple remains of uh, Gupta period, remains of fossilized apes, none of the above. Rama Pitikas and uh, Shiva Pitikas. But look, that's a, I mean, by the way, anyways, because we, we are, we are, we are at a point of discussing this. Rama Pitikas are they actually fossilized apes, the fossil re related to human evolution. And some of the earliest skull fossils found in Shivalik regions of India and Pakistan have been called the Ramapithikas and Shivapithikas. They are basically hominoid in feature, not fully developed. Now, regarding the CSAT case for which hearing is there, no? I think it's a genuine demand saying 23%. 
it's not it's not unfair 23 percent must must be the cutoff not the full not 33 percent this is my view you may disagree with me because the the argument is genuine <laughs> in fact the csat paper which was given is very very is very 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 associated very close to to the people of BTEC background or the CSAT CAT background. Regional medium students are getting hit by black and blue. See, GS can be any amount of tough. There is no limit to GS. GS chahe jitna utna mushkil kar do. Problem nahi. But, I mean, in fact, I, I don't want to sound bad, but by giving by making csat paper so complicated it looks like they are on a upsc is on a path to make sure that rural people the depressed class people the underclass people do not actually even get an opportunity to write the exam the, trust me somebody who had studied in say hindi medium or telugu medium or punjabi medium or a rajasthani medium all his school all his education all his graduation has zero opportunity to answer this question, answer this paper. 23 chodo wo 10 percent bhi na laage is paper mein, CSAT ke paper mein. See, I mean, this has gone beyond exam standard. This is sadism. You, what UPSC is doing is not exam. What they are doing with the CSAT paper is sadism. Reading comprehension, it makes absolute, you know, 10th class ka reading comprehension to hai ne. They can get it checked with any, any uh, expert. Chalega. It was definitely not reading comprehension of the 10th class level. Pakka. Without doubt. Is he sabse to UPSC has to be penalized for it look at we understand it's a constitutional body it's a great body it's a constitutional body but still constitution is supreme upsc is not har cheez ki ek had hoti hai upsc ne had par kiya hai for everything there is a boundary line there is a there's a limit upsc crossed it this time They could do this with GS because GS may you get a level playing field. Everybody reads the same syllabus. With CSAT, you don't actually get a level playing field because there are people who have been doing reading comprehensions and quant, etc. Technical students from the very beginning and people of the arts, people of the regional medium don't do it. discrimination. They have to make it 23. Hopefully. Which of the following archaeological sites belong to the Paleolithic period? Karnul caves, Umsi caves, Imangao caves, Bimbetka caves. Select the correct answers from the codes given below. Paleolithic. Answer is A B B B B B B B one two and four. Imanga was Neolithic. Imanga was Neolithic. Which of the following statements regarding Mesolithic? Cancel the following statements regarding Mesolithic age. Mesolithic is a transitional phase between Paleolithic and Neolithic. Mesolithic people lived on hunting, fishing, and food gathering and did not domesticate animals. Bagor and Rajasthan had a distinctive microlithic industry. Which of the following statements is or are correct?
आंसर इज सी 9000 BC began an intermediate stage between Stone Age culture, which is called Mesolithic. It's also generally believed to be as a transitional phase between Paleolithic and Neolithic. Mesolithic people lived on hunting, fishing, food gathering at a later stage. They also even domesticated animals. Characteristic tools of the Mesolithic age is basically microlithic tools or small handheld tools of approximately eight centimeters eight to fifteen centimeters. Mesolithic. Sites are bound in Rajasthan, southern UP, central and eastern India, and also south of River Krishna. Bagor is very well excavated as a distinctive microlithic industry, and its inhabitants insisted on hunting pastoralism. The site has remained occupied for 5,000 years from 5th millennium BC. Adamgarh in MP and Bagor in Rajasthan provide one of the earliest evidences of. Domestication of animals. Yes, Parth. Parth, wasn't it Gandhi who went to London to speak? Photo bhi hai na? Purushottam Das, Gandhi, etc. All sitting at a single place doing round table conferences. Gandhi only went. Which of the following Neolithic sites are known for pit house dwellings? Kodinba, Tekalkota, Chirand and Burzahum, pit dwellings. Burzahum in Jammu and Kashmir, no, actually. Burzahum, present Kashmir. People build Guf, Gufkral and Burzahum. We also talk about Gufkral. Gufkral and Burzahum are pit dwelling houses where people dug the sort of into the ground with the steps leading to them. These may have provided shelter in cold weather during in Kashmir. Montag comes your proposals were related to judicial reforms, educational reforms, constitutional reforms, police reforms. Montag comes for reforms. It's basically constitutional reforms. Montag comes are reforms also called Government of India Act 1919. These reforms only the primary object of the proposals was to increase the association of Indians in every branch of administration in India and also for gradual development of self-governing institutions with a view to a progressive realization of responsible government in India as an integral part of British Empire. As an integral part of British Empire. Consider the following statements regarding Montag Kemsworth reforms. In 1918, Edwin Montag, the Secretary of State, and Lord Kemsworth, the Viceroy, produced their scheme for constitutional reforms, which eventually led to enactment of Government of India in 1919. After the scheme of constitutional reforms, the provincial legislative councils were enlarged and the majority of their members were to be elected. The provincial governments were given more powers under the system of diarchy. Answer this, guys. Sorry, one second. Ashmith is alone. I need to keep checking him. One second.
Sorry, guys. Huh? Answer is D. Perfect. Uh, Secretary of State for India, Edwin Montag and Lord Kamsworth, the Vice Roy, produced their scheme of constitutional reforms which led to enactment of the Government of India Act. Basically, Government of India Act 1990 is known for the diarchy scheme. Provincial legislative councils were enlarged and the majority of the members were to be elected. Provincial governments were given more powers under the system of diarchy. Under this system, some subjects such as finance and law and order were called reserve subjects and they remained under the direct control of the governor, while others such as education, public health, local self-government were called transport subjects and they were kept under the governor with his own council. Okay. Now, because of the following statements regarding the powers of governor under the Montag Kimsford reforms, under this system, some subjects such as finance, law and order were called reserve subjects and remained under the control of governor. Governor remained the partial control over finances after Montag Kimsford reforms. The governor could moreover overrule the ministers on any grounds what he considered special grounds. Which of the following statements is or are true? Good morning, Shantanu. Good morning, good morning. Perfect answer here is C. Yes, one and three are correct. Not partial, full control. Governor in full control. The Indian National Congress met in special session at Bombay in 1918 August under the presidentship of which of the following nationalists? to consider Montag Kemsford reforms proposals. Abdul Kalam Azad, Hassan Imam, Madan Mohan Malavya, Mazar ul Haq. As I said, this type of questions also do come. It is still, it is a factual question, but a little elaborate. Pure factual question. Answer is B. Hassan Imam. <laughs> Hassan Imam. Indian nationalists, they were no longer willing to let an alien government decide the fitness of uh, self government The International Congress actually met at a special Congress session in Bombay, the Bombay August 1919 session, under the presidentship of Hassan Imam to consider the reform proposals. Montag Kemsford reform proposals were discussed here. It condemned them as disappointing and unsatisfactory. Congress leaders led by Surendranath Banerjee were in favor of accepting the government proposals and left the Congress at, at this time. In fact, they refused to attend the Bombay session where they would have formed an insignificant minority and founded the Indian Liberal Federation. Now you understand where the Indian Liberal Federation comes into existence. Indian Liberal Federation came into existence because Congress in August 1918 met and rejected Montag Kemsworth proposals. Whereas some of the old loyalists, which is semi moderates and moderates, they wanted to continue the loyalty and believe in the British rule. Those who wanted to continue eventually became Indian liberals, the in establishing the Indian Liberal Federation, and Congress continued on the path of opposing Montag Kemsworth reforms. In which of the following country Mahatma Gandhi pursued uh, legal education? South Africa, Britain, India, Russia. At first instance, the question may look easy, but it's also tricky. Is the question asking legal education or legal practice? That must be your first doubt. 
is the question really asking you legal education or legal practice legal education education is london britain after getting his legal education britain he eventually went to south africa imbued with a hey sense of justice he was he revolted by injustice discrimination and degradation it was in south africa he practiced legal practice they had to register and pay a poll tax in south africa now you understand where prelims can be a little tricky question asan hi lagta puri prelims ka hamesha problem options mein hai question mein kabhi nahi tha now they could recite i mean once so gandhi went to south africa he realized that he could recite except in prescribed locations which were unsanitary and congested because indian colonies were sort of meant for poor people and very low on hygiene and sanitation in some of the south african colonies asians also africans could not stay out of doors after 9 pm no baje ke baad bahar hi nahi nikal sakte gandhi soon became the leader of the struggle against these conditions and during 1893 94 was engaged in the heroic uh, the unequal struggle against racist authorities of south africa he actually fought against apartheid one of the first leaders to do so apartheid gandhi's first great experiment in satyagraha came in which of the following places sabarmati dandi champaran and khida <laughs> first experiment with satyagraha bye the first experiment in satyagraha came in champaran champaran satyagraha the first against tin katya system the in katya system where the planters were forcing the farmers to plant indigo in their farms at 3 by 20th part 3 by 20th part of the farm must be planted with indigo similar conditions had prevailed earlier in bengal but as a result of a major uprising during 1859 60 the peasants there had won their freedom from the indigo farmers as after the champaran satyagraha satyagraha yes Anushya Sarabha assisted Mahatma Gandhi during which of the following agitations? Ahmedabad mill strike, Dandi, Champaran, and Khida. Ashmet generally comes and keeps an eye. He checks that he is taking a glass or taking a glass. So he keeps doing that every 10-15 minutes. He comes and opens the door and checks that he is taking a glass. He goes and goes. because he will let me alone in the room only if i'm taking class agar gappe marna to he will also be here it's pretty simple it's pretty straight forward <laughs> and the badam the one will strike um, anasuya sarabai brother of uh, vikram uh, mali uh, aunt of uh, vikram okay ambalal sarabai ki behan anasuya and uh, she and he uh, gandhi undertook a fast on to death in uh, amdavad mill strike when a compromise was uh, trying to be brought by the farmer by the workers without actually sticking to their original demand some of the mill workers initially demanded a uh, hike but they were ready to accept little bit of hike which gandhi opposed gandhi said ek bar strike pe baitha to pura achieve karke hi jana you can't withdraw in between when the workers tried to withdraw in between gandhi went on hunger strike against the workers also mill owners relented on the fourth day agreed to give 35% increase in the wages he also supported the peasants in uh, gandhi also supported peasants in khada in gujarat and it was in khara that sardar vallabh bhai patel became very close to gandhi satyagraha sabha was founded by mahatma gandhi against which of the following acts Government of India Act 1935, Railroad Act 1919, the Official Secrets Act 1923, Indian Councils Act 1909. 
guys the class will get extended a little uh, we are currently at 54th slide we will finish off all the questions about 95 another 40 45 slides khatam hi kar denge bekar ka time pass matlab i always believe that ek bar plate mein biryani hai dal liya to pura khana hi padta hai paap hai biryani waste karna Rahul attack 1919 no Gandhi was also aroused at Rahul attack Rahul attack had three provisions guys number 1 anybody could be arrested up to the period of 2 years under preventive detention preventive custody and then number 2 evidences which are not recognized even under indian evidence act can be submitted as an evidence by the government against the accused number 3 in rowlet cases the the cases will be decided by a tribunal and the judgment of the tribunal is final no appeal that is why rowlet act was also called no appeal no dalil no vakil philosophy no vakil no dalil no appeal february 1919 when rowlet act was actually passed and it was implemented it was suggested gandhi founded the satyagraha sabha mainly took a pledge to disobey the rowlet act and thus to court arrest and imprisonment if if agar zarurat padi to imprisonment ho jaunga he was he also introduced a new method of struggle the nationalist movement whether under the moderate or extremist leadership had either to confined to the struggle of agitation big meetings and demonstrations refusal to cooperate with the government boycott of foreign cloth and schools or individual acts of terrorism were the only forms of political work known to the nationalists at that time satyagraha immediately moved the movement to a whole new level nationalists could now act in place of giving only verbal expression to their dissatisfaction and anger matlab see look all this looks in very high class english simply gandhi was introducing a new method of struggle called the silent treatment satyagraha in english can be called a silent treatment basically eight crore indians were saying we won't talk we won't even tell you why we won't talk hum baat bhi nahi karenge hum ye bhi nahi bolenge ki kyu baat nahi kar raha hai bas aise baithe rahenge tension se tum hi mar jao hum na marenge na maarenge I obviously this is my view guys I've always felt satyagraha to be a type of psychological terrorism it's not easy to handle silent treatment by one person yahan pe one full country was sitting on it it was pretty bad and on uh, 6th april 1919 which of the following historical events took place in india jallianwala bag massacre dandi march non cooperation bengal partition Jallian Wala Bagh. The government uh, was determined to suppress the mass agitation. It repeatedly lati charged and fired upon unarmed demonstrators at Bombay, Ahmedabad, Calcutta, Delhi, and other cities. Gandhi ji gave a call for the mighty hartal on the 6th of April 1919. The people responded with unprecedented enthusiasm. The government decided to meet the popular protest with the repression, particularly in Punjab. at this time was perpetrated one of the worst political crimes in modern history an armed large crowd was shot by general reginald dyer and this crowd was eventually actually meeting only to discuss how to re react to the arrest of uh, dr satyapal and uh, saifuddin kichlu now i'll tell you one interesting aspect see i, I think two days ago in uh, brampton canada they did a procession of uh, indira gandhi's killing and they celebrated it right and india got very frustrated with this this is my view and i'm pretty sure everybody many will accept with this india must also do a parade of komagata maru incident 
the Gadar party tortures and the Bajbaj incident. We have to do this. India also has to remind Canada that Canada koi dhut ka dhula nahi hai. Bajbaj, Komagatamaru and Gadar party. How Canada tortured people of Gadar? Dr. Satyapal, uh, sorry, uh, Barkatullah, Bhai Parmanan, किस तरीके से टॉर्चर किया और पूरे गदर पार्टी पैसिफिक कोस्ट हिंदी एसोसिएशन हैड टू रन अवे फ्रॉम कनाडा टू एस्केप फॉर देयर लाइफ टुवर्ड्स सैन फ्रांसिस्को ओ अजय जैन जैन यू हैव नो आईडिया यस्टरडे यस्टरडे लिटरली जयशंकर सेड उल्टा कोतवाल उल्टा चो, उल्टा चोर कोतवाल को डांटे जयशंकर यूज दिस वर्ड्स When not Trudeau, Trudeau's uh, say, NSA said that India is getting involved in its uh, internal affairs. In fact, <coughs> the funniest part is <coughs> um, S. J. Shankar, India's foreign minister, openly said that Canada should have shame. Ulta chor kotwal kodate. It is Canada which is involving in our internal affairs, supporting Khalistanis. Oh yes, he blasted it. This is a bureaucrat, guys. This is not a minister. S. J. Shankar is a bureaucrat first, then a minister. Bureaucrat hai, dhona achhi tarah aata hai, nirma ke saath. And jab dhota hai, to safedi chamakti hai. General Reginald, the military commander of Amritsar, decided to terrorize the people of Amritsar into complete submission. Jalan Walabagh was large open space, <coughs> which was enclosed on three sides by buildings and had one exit. He surrounded the Bagh with his uh, armed unit and uh, closed the exit with the troops and then ordered his men to shoot into the trapped crowd and rifles and machine guns. They fired till their ammunition was exhausted. No. People gathered, people were gathered in Jallianwala Bagh to protest the arrest of whom of their leaders? Bhagat Singh Satyapal, Bhagat Singh Rajguru, Saibuddin Kishlu Mahatma Gandhi, Saibuddin Kishlu Satyapal. Today I am going to make a video, make a video on how Canada must be roasted. I'll put it on my YouTube. Satyapal Kichlu, they were arrested because the intention was to uh, discuss and the government wanted to suppress the any opportunity of uh, Satyagraha and that's why they wanted to discuss. Okay. Which of the following leaders were among those who left Congress after the declaration of non-cooperation program because they still believed in lawful constitutional struggles? Subhash Chandra Bose, Annie Besant, G.S. Karpade, Muhammad Ali Jinnah and Jawaharlal Nehru. Non-cooperation movement jab declared kiya tha, bohut lawane Congress bhi chhod diya tha. Ye log kaun thai? Anita Pakka, she left. The answer is B. Annie Besant. Pakka left, Karpade left, Jinnah sahab also left, no, Jinnah also left non-corporation movement, answer is B, 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 why C, B, 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 why do you think Jinnah was continuing in Congress after non-corporation movement, 
on this be declaration non cooperation movement by congress in the nagpur session of 1920 um, came as a shock because many of them did not like it like mohammed ali jinnah ani bisen gs karpade bipin chandrapal they actually left congress they believed in a constitutional and lawful struggle while others like surendra and banerji ended up establishing indian national liberal Found uh, federation and liberal federation continued okay who among the following was associated with the famous uh, Heraka movement? Which of the following? Who is involved with Heraka movement? Rani Kainilu. She is uh, believed to be a reincarnation of the goddess Tama Chedinlu. Rani Kedinlu was a Naga political and uh, spiritual leader. Her political struggle in the present day Northeast and based on Gandhian principles of Satyagraha initially. She also played a very important role in India's wider freedom movement by spreading the message of Gandhi in Manipur region. She was born in Nungkao in Northeast of Manipur. She died in Longkao, Manipur. She participated in freedom struggle at a very early age of 13 after she came under the influence of Heraka religious sect. Heraka sect movement was launched by her cousin Haipo Jadonong initially to reform the Zelianrong Naga communities. In fact, they used to call, they used to believe she is actually reincarnation of goddess Chaima Chadinlu. <laughs> After which of the following incident, the Bardoli resolution was passed. Jalianwala Ba, Chori Chora incident, death of Lala Lajpatrai, none of the above. The Bardoli Resolution. Answer is BBB. Chori Chara Kebab. Remember, it was the Bardoli Resolution which declared the suspension of non cooperation movement and also the suspension of the upcoming civil disobedience movement which Gandhi was actually planning. On the 4th of February 1922, a mob of 3,000 peasants gathered at a liquor shop at, uh, at Chauri Chora town near Gorakhpur. Local administration sent the police to control the situation. Police attempted to disperse the crowd but the crowd went out of control and they started stone pelting. The police fired and killed three people. In result, the entire police station along with 23 policemen were burnt inside by the people alive. On 12th of February, when Gan Congress leaders met at Bardoli, Gandhi directly declared the suspension of non-cooperation movement. It was obviously a bit controversial at the time when Gandhi declared it, but by the time Gandhi's speaker was very respectable in congressmen. So while they disagreed, most congressmen agreed and abide by Gandhi. They did not oppose him. Gandhi himself was arrested in March 1922 and trialed in Ahmedabad. Simple prison sentence of six years was awarded to him. Bardoli resolution of withdrawing Chauri Chaura incident or withdrawing non cooperation movement actually sent shockwaves across the Indian nationalists and even developed mixed results or mixed reaction among Indian nationalists. Consider the following regarding the contribution of Khilafat agitation. It was it had brought urban Muslims into nationalist movement, responsible in part for the feeling of uh, national enthusiasm and exhilaration that prevailed in the country in those days. It was inevitable that different sections of society would come to understand the need for freedom through their particular demands and experiences. Khilafat agitation represented much wider feelings of Muslims than their concerns for the Khalifs. Which of the above statements is or are correct? <laughs> the Khilafat movement. <laughs> Is 
It actually, yes, answer is D. Khilafat <clears throat> Mumayan played a substantially big role. It was an important contribution actually to Indian national struggle because Khilafat Mumayan was able to bring the people of different platforms together onto a single place or a single unit. It had brought urban Muslims into national movement and had been thus responsible for sort of developing a feeling of nationalism or nationalist enthusiasm <clears throat> among people. Some historians have definitely criticized Khilafat movement for uh, mixing politics with religion. But look, this was India. Most historians tend to forget this. Ye Hindustan hai. Yaha har cheez, dharam, jati pe aadharit hai. There are many things in India which are based on your religion which are based on your uh, caste, which are based on your identities. So you can't really, I mean, in India, you can't actually do anything by blatantly and directly avoiding your caste and religion. That's the reality of it. Yes, urban Muslims, yes. <laughs> Harshini, in fact, that is where the problem was now. While Khilafat and Congress focused on urban Muslims, eventually Muslim League focused on rural Muslims. And naturally, rural Muslim numbers are bigger. Right? That is why Muslim League was beneficial. Congress Khilafat Swaraj Party was founded by Jawaharlal Nehru, Motilal Nehru, Mahatma Gandhi and Subhash Chandra Bose. Congress Khilafat Swarajist Party. Motilal Nehru. Motilal Nehru and Chitranjan Das, they were basically pro-changers. These people believed in council entry. They wanted to continue the non-cooperation movement by getting elected into the councils and wanted to create non-cooperation inside the council. While Gandhi did not agree with them, Gandhi did not oppose them directly because Gandhi knew that if he opposed them directly, he would risk another split among the congressmen. So that's why pro-changers, these are people who wanted to go into the council, get elected and then protest. And then the other group, which is the no-changers. No-changers were people who believed that we should not participate in elections because we are opposing the government. Both of these took two different paths, but they worked together. Consider the following statements regarding ideologies of no-changers in the modern Indian history. The no-changers opposed council entry. They advocated uh, concentration of constructive work and continuation of boycott and non-cooperation. The school of thought was led by Vallabhai Patel, Rajendra Prasad, Rajagopala Chari, M.A. Ansari. They came to be known as no changes. Which of the above statements is or are correct? The no changes. Answer must be D now. D, D, D. Straightforward. Good answer. C.R. Das, Motilal Nehru believed in uh, continuing the political activity from inside the councils. They said the nationalists should actually end the boycott of the legislative councils and uh, expose their, get participation in the government and expose the weaknesses of the government. Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel, Dr. M Dr. Ansari, Babu Rajendra Prasad, Sri Raj Gopalachari, these people were known as no changes or basically Gandhians. They opposed council entry because according to them, you can't oppose a government for which you are, you are protesting against. You know, very simple. I'll tell you very simple. You know, I'll, I'll show you. I'll write the same. Guys, for many people do get confused at this part. Very simple. I'll tell you. 1922 NCM ended, right? 
So basically all the people who were doing NCM split into three groups. Pro changers, no changers, non-Congress. These both were Congress. Pro-changers believed that now that we have stopped our non-cooperation movement, we must participate in the council elections. Congress must enter the provincial councils and continue the non-cooperation movement from inside the councils politically. Not doing dharnas, but not letting the government work. But there was other group which was led by Gandhi. Now Gandhi and his followers of Congress believed that we should not enter the councils, go back to Congress basics and try to build Congress base. And the no changers were of the argument that Congress cannot oppose a government in which Congress itself is part. See, by pro-changers, don't you think Congress is participating in the government only? The Congress elections jeet ke andar jayega, so it is part of the government only, no. So Congress cannot oppose Congress. That is what Gandhi's idea was. So Gandhi suggested, let us not participate in any elections. Let us go back to building our base. And these were basically revolutionaries. I actually call them pushpas. You look like jhukega nai. Tagge de lel. They quit Congress altogether. They were like Congress ga tel lene. I will, we will go break people and kill people. Bhagat Singh, Raj Guru, Sukhdev, Ashwakulla Khan, Ram Prasad Bismil. That batch. Ajit Singh. Now you got the difference between pro changers and no changers. George, Shino George. And everybody else got the clarity very simple no changers wanted to go back to congress working constructive work pro changers wanted to join the government and protest non-congress completely quit congressian methods and took the path of revolutionary they wanted to kill people they were like let us kill two three viceroys and everybody will run away Consider the following statements regarding Kushinagar. It is an important Buddhist pilgrimage site where it is believed that Gautam Buddha delivered his last sermon. Kushinagar is among the few places in India where Buddha is depicted in reclining form. The present Kushinagar is identified with Kushinara, the capital of Mallas, which was one of the 16 Mahajanapadas of the 6th century BC. Which of the both statements is or are correct? Answer is C. Kushinagara is an important town in Kushinagar district of Indian state of UP. It is an important Buddhist pilgrimage site where Buddhists believe Gautam Buddha attained Mahaparinirvana after death, not the last sermon. Mahaparinirvana. Samadhi. It was not a sermon place. The present Kushinagar is identified with Kushivati and Kushinara in the post Buddhist period. Kushinara was the capital of Malla. Malla Mahajanapada and it was one of the 16 Mahajanapadas of the 6th century BC. Kushinagar is among very few places in India where Buddha is depicted in reclining form. Buddha delivered his last sermon at Vaishali. Consider the following statements. Red Fort was built during the reign of Shah Jahan in the mid 17th century. Red Fort was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site as part of the Red Fort Complex. Akbar was the last Mughal emperor to occupy the Red Fort. Which of the following statements is or are correct? A. 
In fact, if you observe, we are actually covering a lot of current affairs. Fact or stats based current affairs. Red Fort, answer is B. Red Fort was built by during Shah Jahan, during the reign of Shah Jahan in mid 17th century. It was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2007 as part of the Red Fort complex. Bahadur Shah Zafar or Bahadur Shah II was the last occupant of Red Fort. Okay, he was the last Mughal. Consider the following statements regarding Rani Gaidin Lu. Gaidin Lu was a Naga spiritual and uh, political leader who led the revolt against British rule in India. She has been called the daughter of the hills. She was associated with Haraka movement that was an ancestral Naga religion. Which of the following statements is or are correct? Some time ago we did see about uh, Rani Gaidin Lu, but this is more the factual information about her. Current affairs in about Rani Gaidin Lu. Rani, answer is D. Perfect. Yes. She is a Naga spiritual leader and a political leader who led a revolt against the British in India. And uh, she is actually also considered a goddess or religious leader of the religious group, which was founded by her cousin, uh, Hypo Jadanong, her sister. Jadanong was also called as Rongme, started the Hiraka movement based on ancestral Naga religion and envisioned an independent Naga kingdom, the Nagaraja. Gaiden Lu was associated with uh, Jadana and prepared her fight with the British. Eventually, she was arrested and put in jail. After 14 years in jail, in 1947, she was released. Acknowledging her role in the struggle against the British, Jawaharlal Nehru even called her Daughter of the Hills and gave her the title Rani, the Queen. Which of the following were primarily related to Indian education system during the colonial period? Woods Dispatch, Macaulay Minutes, Simon Commission, Sadler Commission, which of these was associated with education systems? Answer is C. Macaulay Minute to Woods Dispatch, several commissions, including Sadler Commission 1904, Indian Education Policy, etc., were built mainly to improve education system. Simon Commission was a political commission, not an education commission, right? For constitutional development of India. All white political commission. Which of the following state consider the following statements? He was given the title line of Punjab. He was known for just and secular rule. He turned Harminder Sahib at Amritsar into golden temple by covering it with gold. Which the above statements refer to? This is possibly the easiest question of the day. Maharaja Ranjit Singh. The land was given to Guru Arjun Dev by Akbar. But it was Maharaja Ranjit Singh who actually converted Harminder Sahib into Golden Temple. Punjab was a land of six rivers and six being the Indus. Maharaj Ranjit Singh was actually a ruler of the Sukhir Chakyar Misalor Kingdom who then con consolidated his power by occupying all the other Punjabi kingdoms. Maharaja Ranjit Singh was also known for his just and secular rule. He turned Amrit Harminder Sahib into Golden Temple. Now, quick question. Very small question. Divane Pandagan established by Firoz Shah Tughlaq is very easy. Possibly the easiest. Divane Pandagan. It was established by Firoz Shah Tughlaq. It was actually Department of Slaves. 
दीवान ए खैरत ऑफिस ऑफ चैरिटी दीवान ए बंदगान डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ स्लेव सराय मीन रेस्ट हाउस दिस वॉल एस्टैब्लिश बाई फिर दीवान ए खैरत दीवान ए बंदगान टू डिपार्टमेंट एस्टैब्लिश बाई हिम द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सराय ट्रैवलिंग रेस्ट हाउसेज इन इंग्लिश वी कॉल दिस इन आई एन एन Afterwards, Mughals also continued the same concept, and uh, Firoz Shah Tughlaq also established four towns: Firozabad, Fatehabad, Jaunpur, and Hisar e Firoz Shahi. And he also established a hospital known as Dar ul Shifa, Bimaristan, or Shifa Khana. Dar ul Shifa, Bimaristan, ya Shifa Khana. Consider the following statements regarding the Prigal Prince Dara Shikoh. He was the son of Shah Jahan and killed after losing the war of succession against Aurangzeb. He is described as a liberal Muslim who tried to find commonalities between Hindu and Islamic traditions. He translated into Persian the Bhagavad Gita as well as Upanishads. Which of the following statements is or are correct? About Dara Shikoh. Dara has been in news a lot in the last few years, few days. Answer must be D. Yes. Answer is D. He was the eldest son of Shah Jahan. He was killed after losing the Battle of Succession with Aurangzeb, Battle of Diora, and Battle of Samugat. Recently, Archaeological Survey of India has established a team to identify and locate Darashiko's tomb. He is generally described as the most liberal Muslim king who tried to find commonalities between Hindu and Islamic traditions. He also translated into Persian the Bhagavad Gita as well as 52 Upanishads. Okay, consider the following statement. He was associated with Justice Party and the Self-Respect Movement. He launched the Dravida Karagam. He was involved in the Vaikom Satyagraha of 1924. He focused on social, cultural and gender inequalities and his reform agenda questioned matters of faith, gender and traditions. The above statements actually refer to, oh this is very very easy. Justice Party, Dravida Karagam, Vaikom Satyagraha, very common events of his, this man's life. Periyar, E. Road, Venkatapa, Ramasami, Naikar. E. V. means E. Road, Venkatapa, Ramasami, Naikar. Periyar, Ramasami, Naikar, born in 1879. Periyavar or Periyar means the elder one is remembered for his self-respect movement, also called Suvai Mariyadai movement, to redeem the identity and self-respect of Tamils. He envisaged a Dravidian homeland or the concept of Dravid Nadu. And for that, he launched a political party, Dravida Karagam. Today, Tamil Nadu's two political parties, Dravida Munetra Karagam, Dravida All India, Anna Dravida Munetra Karagam, AIADMK, both are descendants of this Dravida Karagam. He is also associated with the Justice Party of the Justice Magazine and uh, Self Respect Movement. Periyar is well known for his Vaikom Satyagraha of 1924, basically a mass movement demanding temple entry and access to public path for the lower caste people. In Kerala, lower caste people were prohibited from using roads, using uh, temples or entering temples. Vaikom Satyagraha was actually against that. It was very simple demand, demanding the lower caste persons also be given the right to use public path in front of the Vaikom temple because depressed classes were not permitted to walk on the road in front of the Vaikom temple. Leave alone entering the temple, they could not even enter the road. He protested against it. In 1940s, Periyar eventually launched the Dravida Karagam where he expected to establish an independent Dravida Nadu comprising Tamil, Malayalam, Telugu, Kannada speakers. In fact, he was also a non-congressman. He also hated Congress. At one point, there is one evidence of Periyar Ramasamy Naikar, Ambedkar and Jinnah even discussing an India without Congress. But obviously that did not work out because Jinnah was too radical for Periyar as well. As a social reformer, he focused on social, cultural, gender inequalities. He asked people to be rational in their life, in their choices. And he argued that women needed to be completely independent 
not just a child bearers and insisted that they have equal share in employment in fact some of the practices like for example in those days we had this kalapane tradition that is you cannot actually cross the sea and if you cross the sea you will uh, lose your uh, kula and uh, your uh, identity periyar insisted people to cross the sea because that way depressed classes will lose their identity and they will no longer be the untouchables smart that's why we see a lot of uh, tamil in the uh, southeast asia consider the following statements regarding the 1946 royal indian navy revolt the immediate trigger was the demand for better food and working conditions for indian sailors of the royal indian navy indian national congress and the muslim league condemned the, the strikers the revolt was actually confined to bombay region which of the above statements is are correct one and three one only one and two two and The answer is C. One and two. The revolt was not confined only to Bombay. It was also seen in 23 other cantonments and military establishments. Not just in Bombay. But yes, the Royal Indian Navy revolt, the immediate trigger was shortage of food, demanding better food and working conditions. But the larger demand was against the Royal, uh, the uh, INA trials, Red Fort trials. The larger demand was red fort trials, but the immediate trigger was a shortage of food and demand for equal treatment. From the initial point, flashpoint in Bombay, the revolt spread across British India from Calcutta to Karachi. A only Communist Party of India supported the Royal Indian Navy mutiny. Indian National Congress, Muslim League, all of them categorically and clearly condemned the revolt without any hesitation. Consider the following statements regarding Harappan civilization. Harappan cities used burnt bricks for building, whereas contemporary buildings of Egypt dried bricks were primarily used. Unlike Egyptians and Mesopotamians, Harappans did not write long inscriptions. Unlike Harappans, Mesopotamians domesticated elephants in large scale. Which of the above statements is or are correct? The answer is A. A. One and two. Harappan cities used burnt bricks, whereas Egyptians used dried bricks. Unlike Egyptian, unlike Harappans, Egyptians and Mesopotamians left long inscriptions. There are nearly four thousand specimens of Harappan writings on stone seals. Unlike Egyptians and Mesopotamians, Harappans did not ever write long inscriptions. That's actually one of the main weaknesses why we are not able to decipher the Harappan script. And most inscriptions were recorded in seals with only a few words. And Harappan script is not alphabetic but largely pictographic. The use of burnt bricks in Harappan cities is remarkable because their contemporary of Harappa, Egyptian Old Kingdom, they were using dried bricks. We, own, we find the use of baker bricks in contemporary Mesopotamia, but they were used to a much, much larger extent in Harappa. Although Harappans practiced agriculture, animals were raised on a large scale. There is evidence of dogs, cats from the outside, and asses and camels were bred. Elephants were well known to Harappans. Now, see, look, elephant, Asian, South Asian animal. How will Mesopotamians even use it? not native to their place no humped bulls were favored by harappans at any cost. so that's why uh, the third option is wrong mesopotamians do not show much of an evidence of elephants anyway okay so guys that's a that's it for today and uh, now after this uh, class on the on this join this telegram channel here which i have
on this channel i'll be putting a um, mains question of the day and uh, let us meet at night 9 pm we'll discuss the solution the answer for the mains question of the day and then we'll also continue the unification movement of uh, italy italian unification and uh, german unification today night 9 pm that's it for me today thank you i'll see you at 9 pm with mains and tomorrow morning 8 a.m with prelims 2024 thank you guys bye bye have a nice day